Greetings. Welcome back to Ministry Monday. This is Carlton Kuhn. For a while, we've been talking about leading people as a shepherd toward a real-world spirituality. We're in the midst of a enrollment period for the Disciple Makers Training Course. There is a link uh, available here on this particular video post. If you're interested, please uh, connect and uh, learn more about our Disciple Makers Training Course. I want to talk a little bit about leading people toward a real-world spirituality, and that's really a continuation of a conversation we've already started. I'm thankful to be a people of the Spirit. And Paul said he was grateful that he spoke in tongues more than you all in addressing the Corinthians. Praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues is important. In the book of Acts, the second chapter, they worshiped God as the Holy Ghost came into them, praising Him in languages that they were not personally familiar with. Notice they were not preaching but they were telling the wonderful works of God. What happened on that initial day of the beginning of the New Testament church was a praise fest. Now, time moves forward. There is a different use of speaking in tongues. It becomes part of prayer. It becomes part of praise. And it also becomes part of this operation of spiritual gifts, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Paul knew the danger. I think he had heard of some things that were happening in the Corinthian church where that they had become consumed with a pursuit of the visible manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit to the point that it had become ineffective. And he sends them information about properly governing that operation of tongues and interpretation of tongues. And those things alone are what many define as being spiritual. So if spirituality is not ministered by manifestation gifts, how can we maneuver and lead people toward a real spiritual maturity? Now, it, it's going to sound counterintuitive because what I'm going to tell you does not have a big splash associated with it, but spiritual people are going to have personal devotion and quiet time, time of prayer personal time as an expected norm in their Christian life. And for that to happen, we have to put it into them because personal devotion, personal prayer does not come naturally. Uh, we have to teach it. We have to preach it. We have to conjole. We have to encourage. And then we have to provide resources to help our people be effective in prayer, effective in their personal devotion and keep it fresh for them because it will always need renewing and freshening. The second thing that I think each of us are responsible for is that we lead our church to a sustainable corporate prayer program. And that can't be delegated. It can't be something that we say, well, you guys do it. Uh, our church is probably running along about average now. Uh, we can park just a few more than average, and average in America is about 72 people in a, in a church on a given Sunday. Uh, what is our, our consistent prayer program like? Well, number one, pre-service prayer is not an option. You are to be in pre-service prayer if you're going to be on the platform. Non-negotiable. Okay, the second thing that uh, we do is there is a monthly family prayer time. It happens one Monday a month. Is what the church grows, we'll add to that. The third thing is one Sunday of each month, we do a prayer chain. It begins at 7 in the morning. It goes till our 10 o'clock service and then picks up at noon. We have uh, eight people praying one-hour shifts from 7 to 8, 8 to 9, 9 to 10, and then 12 to 1. Okay, so we've got 32 hours of prayer time happening on that Sunday. On the 7 to 8, uh, Pastor Butler, who is the co-pastor of our church, and myself, uh, we meet uh, a group of men of our church, and we uh, pray with them for an hour, and then Sunday morning, it's 8 o'clock by then, we'll go to Hardee's or McDonald's or someplace for a quick bite of breakfast and come back for church. It is a sustainable prayer program. Are we going to do it again next month? Yes. Will we do it again the following month? Yes. Will it happen the week after? If anything changes, we'll be adding to. We won't be taken away from. Sustainable, consistent, a 
prayer ministry, a prayer program. We have to have people praying in order for them to be people of the Spirit. And so that's the place to begin asking the questions about what we're uh, doing and where we're trying to take them. Are we leading them to prayer? Look forward to hearing some of the things that you're using. God bless you. I love you all. Thank you.